overall pick, the future first round, which is is not uh, just it's not clear cut with with the future first round that they're going. It, it's it falls into certain slots, and and as the years go on, it could get pushed down to twenty twenty five. So there's a lot you know to that, but it, it's just there is a possible first first round uh, future pick on there. But I think this is really about Jay Crowder. Jay Crowder. Uh, has been a pretty good player everywhere he's been. He's played in Boston. He's played in Utah. Uh, and, and he's played somewhere else uh, that I, I can't think of right now. I want to say Indiana uh, for the Pacers. And he's been a player that people have appreciated. And so much so that he's been able to be movable. And and, and he may you know not like it, but the great thing about it is that if you have you know someone that's moving around like this, people are valuing your service. Uh, so he has something that, you know, he's offering. So I really look at this more of, you know, that Mike Conley, they got on underneath that, um, they got off from underneath that contract of his to get a younger player in John Morant. And also, uh, they got Jay Crowder, a, a pretty still young guy, if you will, to start this rebuilding stage for the Memphis Grizzlies. So they're, to me, they're just starting, starting over, uh, on this, but I have no problem with the trade. I like the trade. Maybe, uh, Mike Conley gets a chance to make another run, uh, into the playoffs and maybe they can do some. So I'm hoping so because he deserves it. He, he, he's, you know, put in work. Uh, and I saw in the wait a minute show chat room, Mocha Bella said, what did Mike Conley do for Memphis? Mike Conley was a pretty good, uh, player. They, and they had a nice nucleus. Now I remember at one point in time, uh, they had both Gasol brothers and, um, they got Zebo and, uh, even though a later stages, uh, career, they had Vince Carter, among other players and Memphis was there you know with Chandler Parsons you thought that was going to work out but it just didn't they had some potential there they were just never ever able to reach that full potential uh for what they could have done in the Western Conference and and teams in the Western Conference were pretty good too they, their their game was you know dry if you will some people might call it it slowed down it's not really that up and down uh, so maybe that tempo might have worked against them. But for that team, I think Mike Conley, you know, did all he could do. And he was actually a pretty good player uh, for the Memphis Grizzlies. So coming out of Ohio State, too, uh, you, there were question marks, you know, about him. Remember, Greg Oden and him came out, you know, the same year. year. And it's just crazy how things works out is that Greg Oden, he runs into injuries and, you know, his his uh, playing career gets shortened, you know, by that. And Mike Conley, the guy taking, you know, after him, uh, not dead right after him, but the guy taking after him, he has, he's into a 12th year, you know, contract. So things are are, are crazy. Uh, Mocha Bella is still in the chat room talking about both Gasol brothers have rings. What, a, what Conley got? Well, I'll tell you what Conley, I'll tell you what Conley don't have. Mocha Bella, since you asking questions early into the show, goodness. What Conley doesn't have is a mamba. What Conley doesn't have is a claw. And what I'm talking about is Paul Gasol had Kobe Bryant. Uh, Marcus Gasol had Kawhi Leonard. Those are pretty, pretty, pretty good players, if you ask me. Pretty good players that, that can make an impact on on a game. Now, Mike Conley didn't have anybody to go with him uh, uh, with him on that because guess what he had? He had Paul Gasol and Marc Gasol. So he didn't have a Kobe Bryant or a Kawhi Leonard to play basketball with. So, yeah, it's a little limited to what he can do. And I can't believe I'm defending an Ohio State Buckeye like this. But it is what it is. It's true. It is true. You know? It is true. Ron in the Wait a Minute Show chat room said Gasol worth keeping around. So I'm taking it that he's talking about Mark Gasol in Toronto because Ron uh, is up there in Can- uh, Canada, A. Eh? But, um, yeah, I would definitely keep Mark Gasol uh, if, the, if the Raptors are trying to repeat. You're going to need him. Uh, and, and he can as- contribute to that team. We saw it. Uh, what was that? Game one where he put in 20 points. You just need a little bit more consistency, but... I mean, he's an older player, but he can give you uh, quality minutes like that, and, and he has playoff experience. So, yeah, I think it's, it's, he's worth keeping around, you know, on that. So you listen to the Wait a Minute Show with your man Jelani J.B. Bodia, and we're talking sports. 
Uh, and going down tomorrow is the NBA draft. So uh, we don't even need to talk about Zion Williams. Williamson because we already know he's going to go to number one pick, but we're going to talk about him just a little bit. Uh, being the number one pick, obviously you get uh, the weight of the world put on your shoulders, but I think, you know, Zion is getting a galaxy put onto his shoulders because not only is he going to be the number one draft pick overall, he is also going to have these expectations. Um, not to the exact same degree as LeBron, but he is going to have these uh, expectations put on him to basically make an impact very, very quick. And, and that's what we're going to be seeing is how much of his game can grow what can he do with New Orleans? Can he make them relevant? And remember, LeBron, Cleveland is not a major market, you know, uh, uh, city. So, and he made them relevant. Zion, he has the opportunity, you know, to do that. I talked about Memphis earlier having the number one, uh, number two overall pick. And, they, you know, John Moran, I think he's pretty much just locked uh, into that, obviously, because Mike Conley is gone. So, uh, you want to have a, a, a scoring point guard, if you will. Scoring point guards are big uh, in the NBA right now. So if you look around the, the league, there are a lot of scoring point guards. Uh, but he is a, a guy that they say is NBA ready. He is a guy, you know, that do uh, pass the ball and can pass the ball. So that's always great to go, you know, with, with a scoring uh, um, point guard. So the, he's going to be the building block, you know, for that team. And they're going to build around him. They got some, you know, some pieces already. Uh, they're just going to be young and they're going to be trying to make their way, you know, through the uh, NBA. And they got a new, you know, coach, if you will, uh, that that's going to be taking over there. So they're going to be in re rebuilding mode. Number three was the New York Knicks. Now, RJ Barrett uh, is, is one of the talks at, at that, at that play uh, pick, but, Here's what I'm gonna say, you know, about the um, about the, the the New York Knicks. This is about 2020 at this point. I don't know if Kevin Durant is going to come to New York. Everyone was talking about him, you know, uh, moving to, to to New York from Golden State, and of course that was all before the injury. So to me, Durant could just at, at this point. Unless he really wants to do something like if he got these marketing plans or something like that, then maybe he takes off early. But he could just opt in to his contract for the last year. Golden State is not going to be upset because they're going to want to try and keep him uh, for for the future, him and Clay and all that stuff, and, and, and be basically like like he like Kawhi was with Toronto. You know, do everything in their power to to get uh, him to stay. But there has been talks about the New York Knicks talking with uh, KD of coming in 2020 and make you know being a free agent. So what they do now, this is the, what they do now is about 2020, and and what I mean by that is who they draft, the pieces that they're going to put together, and, and and the story that they're going to tell. They already have Kevin Knox from last year. Uh, you traded Porzingis. Uh, he didn't want to be there. And if you get R.J. Barrett, that's going to be a nice added piece. But you're going to need two max players. So th this is what they're going to have to end up doing. It it's showing first, whoever comes to New York got to believe that R.J. Barrett is the guy. And then two, they got to understand we're going to be a, a, a struggling team. We're not going to be a playoff team probably uh, in 2019 2020 NBA season and then when 2020 comes around then we're really going to make make some noise so it it, it it's a tough situation for New York because you know they they lost the number one overall you know lottery pick to the Pelicans so you really thought Zion was going to fall there that doesn't happen now Durant gets injured now that's up in question as far as like who they're going to get you know and, and, and all these other questions but with the NBA draft you got, you know, the rest of the lottery. Then you got who's going to be the um, uh, uh, Kawhi Leonard, if you will. And what I mean, just someone out of the, out of the uh, lottery slots that turns out to be a quality player, you know, in this draft. And, and I don't know. I really don't know if there is someone out there like that. But 
uh, tomorrow. It goes down uh, and we'll find out more about who's going to be, you know, where. And then we can start making our speculations as far as like what these teams are going to be doing for the next season. Uh, in the Wait a Minute Show chat room, uh, we got in a question about uh, from Bernard Duffy. He says, uh, what do you think the Hawks need? And he said the Hanks, but I know he meant, <laughs> he meant the Hawks. Uh, well, obviously, you 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 need someone around Trey Trey Young, and he showed he showed me this year because I, I was a big Luka Doncic fan, you know, and and I be, I said, look, I'm gonna trust the Hawks as far as like what they're doing and they're making you know a good decision, and, and they have. He's up for Rookie of the Year. Uh, he had some struggles at, at, at some point. Uh, in the in the uh, in the season, but rookies do. He's only 19. He only played one year. Uh, and and he, the other thing is, he did not. What I thought he was going to do is is depend on his outside shooting and the range that he has. And he did not do that. He was a playmaker. He found his teammates. Uh, and the brother has uh ice water in his veins. You know, he, he's not scared of the moment. So what you need, what the Hawks need. To, to add to Trey is shooting uh, because you don't want him to be the only shooter uh, on the team, but then you want to have an athletic big. And, and you want a, a big that can get up and down the court with Trey. Uh, you want a big that can that has an established jumper. Not He doesn't have to be a three-point threat or anything like that, but you have to have someone that's going to unclog that middle. Uh, for him, for him to operate and then find players uh, like he did this past season. So get yourself another shooter and then get yourself an a athletic big uh, that will bring and pull some of these other bigs. Because you got to think, you know, in the Eastern Conference, you got a guy like Joel Embiid. He's an outside shooter. He's an, an athletic big. You got a guy, uh, and I think a lot of people were surprised, and Brooke Lopez. He may stay, you know, with, with uh, Milwaukee, but another, he's not as athletic as, as Joel, but he is an athletic big, you know. So you need players like that to go with Trey and, and then also not put all of this on Trey. It, it, it's not fair, uh, and, and nor is it smart, you know, to, to put it all, you know, on one player. So that's that's what I think, you know, the Hawks need. And I hope they do get it here in the ATL because the, the fans are starving, you know, uh, for the Hawks to be relevant again, to get back to some of that success that they had. Uh, and and, and you, you saw what Toronto did uh, in one year. And, you know, they're thinking, hey, we, we can turn around if we get the right right pieces. So, But that's my answer. But NBA draft is going to be going down, and, and somebody, somebody's going to make a mistake. Somebody's going to go, go uh, uh, what, what can I say? Someone's going to go unnoticed. You know, all this is going to, going to happen. And then we'll be talking in two, three, four years later, you know, about who, you know, I can't believe they drafted, you know, some, or I can't believe they traded, you know, because look, Indiana Pacers, I think a lot of people forget in me, uh, and Tyler Butler from, uh, sports and culture. Uh, that's my guy. Uh, we were talking about this, you know, he was posting this on social media about, you know, Kawhi. A lot of people forget Indiana drafted Kawhi Leonard and they traded him right after that for George Hill. Can you imagine? Guess who? Guess who they drafted the year before they drafted Kawhi? Paul George. Imagine what that team would have been like with those two guys playing for Indiana. A lot of people, I'll go back even further in the late 90s. I think a lot of people think Dirk just been in Dallas the entire life. Well, he has, but for a hot second, he was drafted by the Milwaukee Bucks, and they traded him away. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was for uh, Robert Tractor Trailer, you know, RIP to him. So it's just like this is the thing that you get with the draft. You get guys, you know, Draymond Greens that went in the second round. Uh, I, th- I think Kimba Walker might have went late in the first round or he went in the second round. So uh, he, Malcolm Brogdon, uh, although he's not, you know, maybe a household name, but he won rookie of the year. It's it just like the draft is, is is one of those things. It's a science, but then it's, a, it's luck and a guess and a good guess, you know, on it. So someone's going to make somebody right. Somebody's going to make somebody's wrong. 
We'll move on.